What's up guys, welcome back to Seize the Speed for another video. Today, without wasting any time, we're gonna be upgrading my 1996 Forerunner stereo. Um, excuse the mess, I'm just cleaning as I go, but as you can see, I have the Limited, um, and it comes with this sweet retro looking um, uh, tape deck and the three uh, CD changer or whatever this is. Uh, that doesn't work very well anymore, but the radio itself works just fine. Let me show you. So we got the radio working just fine. We got our power antenna with this old thing. But, you know, we need a little bit more than that. We're going to go ahead and put a double-din Pioneer system in here. Um, I'm just going to show you the basics since I should have a ready-to-go wiring harness for this car. Um, without further ado, let's get into it. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and remove this panel around your handbrake. If you have a, I think, 2000 or 99 and up, uh, you'll have cup holders here that look a little bit different. My cup holders are over here, so we'll, we'll get there in a second. But for now, just going to pull. There's a couple tabs here and two here, and this will come off. Break up so you have some more room to work with, and then I'm gonna disconnect. I think this is your rear window switch, and there's another harness here for the transmission power mode. And just like that, we're gonna go ahead and slide it right off. I think we can put the handbrake down now. There we go. Boom, it's out. Set it somewhere safe. Next, we're gonna go up here and remove the rest of this. So once you have that panel off, we're gonna go ahead and take our shifter panels off. And these are also held in by clips. Now, since I have the four by four and I don't feel like removing all this, we'll just let it hang. But if you have a two wheel drive, it's easy to just lift it up and take it off. All right, so once that's out, we're gonna go ahead and just pull on these to remove them. Now your climate control system might look a little different. If you just have the dials, don't worry about it. You don't have to take any of that off. All right, so before we get to the next step, I just wanted to mention, it is always a good idea to take off your battery terminals before doing anything electrical. Now let's hop back in and take the rest of the trim off. Alrighty, so for the next step, we're gonna try to go ahead and pry this trim off. Take it easy since this is an old car. You don't wanna break anything. for the most part there we go and this is what your unit looks like underneath now there's this bolt and this one back here that holds this whole dash piece in so go ahead and unscrew those and then the whole thing should be able to be popped pretty easily All right, once those screws are out, we can go ahead and gently pull on this trim. Not so gentle, but you get the idea. So once this panel is out, you're gonna have two up here and you're gonna have your cigarette lighter and all that jazz down there. So go ahead and unplug all these harnesses so we can get the clock and the 
the whole trim removed out of here. All right, so I unplugged these top three harnesses, your uh, hazards, I think your rear defoggers, and um, this is the clock. Apologize about the noise in the background. This is one of the coolest things I've seen, honestly, since I don't own many old cars. This is completely analog from your uh, air conditioning controls right here. And guess what? This will never go bad. It's always connected. Now in modern cars, I don't know if you've ever had a German car, you can hear the blend doors having issues, getting stuck, now you don't have air. One more reason to not have air conditioning. This right here was, uh, I think our peak as humans <laughs> making cars. Uh, and we've been decaying since. Let's go ahead and put this new stereo in. So I've opted to not take this out because this looks like a pain. You can if you want to. I think this like twists out and that's a plug. But we have everything we need to reach minus the amp that's down there. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, so to take out the head unit itself, that's four bolts. Those and those two right there. I'm going to go ahead and take those off. All right, so once the bolts are out, you just kind of need to wiggle this and boom, it's out. This is going to be a tight fit. So this is what the back of the stereo looks like. Um, I think this is your antenna connection. This is your uh, main harness. And there's a couple wires here that I'm not quite sure what they are for yet. I'm going to get to it in a second. Okay, so I got a little ahead of myself and I thought that I'm having trouble, but I think so far so good. So there is an amplifier, the factory amplifier that has this plug that goes into the radio um, over there. Um, you can see the holes right there. Um, and you take this off and there's two wires going into that. Those are the wires that go into this harness that I've purchased that is supposed to work uh, with my radio. Now, your case might be much different. If you're just looking for insulation, there you go. That's basically it. But if uh, you're not a pro like me and you're kind of just going as you go, this is my personal experience. This is what I'm doing right now. We're gonna continue and see uh, how far we can get. So this is the head unit that I've purchased, DMH-130BT. It's a new Pioneer uh, double DIN, uh, no CD player, just Bluetooth, and it has some screen mirroring functions. Um, we're gonna go ahead and unbox this. So it comes with um, this stuff. It comes with its own harness, although I've purchased the Toyota to Pioneer specific harness. So we're gonna see what's gonna happen. So this is what it looks like. And the packaging, as you can see, it is pretty short since it doesn't need a CD player. I'm going to go ahead and open it up and see what we're working with. All right, I just have the wiring hooked up. Nothing is for sure, but we're going to go ahead and give it a shot and see if anything happens. Uh, take two, car has no power. All right, so nothing is hooked up uh, as far as that stuff, but all the wiring sort of is hooked up. We're gonna go ahead and see moment of truth. If anything works, antenna doesn't wanna come up. But the radio is on. So we need to figure out how to get the antenna to come up. But we have power and we have audio. Let's see if we can get a radio station here. Okay. Good morning, guys. Merry Christmas, depending on when you're watching this video. Um, per the usual seize the speed fashion, I couldn't finish the install yesterday. Let's go check out why. So, picking up where I left off. Um, the last clip you saw, I had the new stereo in. I checked the audio. Everything worked. Minus the antenna wouldn't rise, which honestly isn't a big deal um, since I can get most radio stations anyways and I don't really listen to the radio all that much. But then I went to start the car, no start, and it's then I opened the door and all hell broke loose. Flashers going, 
it's honking um, the security light over here is flashing and I have no idea how to fix that system on a 96 ancient 4Runner with a dealer installed uh, security system now so first thing I did was my first instinct pulled the terminal back off the the battery to shut it up and then I started diagnosing it locking on locking the doors with the cylinder people say there's like a little sequence you can do nothing worked none of that stuff uh, the key cycles none of that worked um i pulled the horn fuse so i could mess with it more right now there's no horn fuse but so it it still freaks out and it still won't start but um but it'll still panic and turn on the lights on and off. so some of these forerunners have a box down here under the seat which mine did not um have that also mine doesn't come with a remote that is like programmed to it like most um mine however does have a security system because it has this thing so everyone says that there's a toggle switch some people have one on this panel over here like a security switch i did not uh when i got hopeless enough i just took this panel off to see what's going on and way back there i saw that box i think that's what it is i'm not sure and then right down below if i can focus on it right there there's a toggle switch and that's how you reset your alarm on a forerunner so if any of you have your alarm system freak out during this install i hope this helps because it was a nightmare for me last night i just kind of left everything and let it be i pushed the car here because it wouldn't start but i just did that and the car started right up so that's that let's go ahead and blend this thing back up so now that we know everything works we can go ahead and remove the factory brackets move them over to our new head unit um i think um t supposed to stand for toyota maybe um we're gonna attempt it so left side to the left side and we're gonna use the hardware that came with this one let's see what happens all right so the install is mostly done all i need to do is put the screens on for the for the climate control just pops back on i'm just test fitting my microphone i put it down here um but it's behind a bunch of harnesses and stuff and it doesn't look very good so and it doesn't sound very good so we're gonna mess with that a little bit but this is the stereo i got i will leave the link down in the description below so you guys can go look at it purchase it if you want to it's a pretty solid head unit um no cd um it has usb it has bluetooth no carplay unfortunately but it has this weblink thingy which kind of sucks but gives you screen mirroring and a couple other things um aside that it's sitting super flush and nice the brackets work perfectly for toyota uh or at least for the forerunner um i also use the harness that goes toyota to pioneer so if you want i will leave the link down in the description below also which made this install completely plug and play as always i would like to thank each and every one of you for watching this video and supporting the channel let me know if you have any other questions uh, i will answer it to the best of my knowledge if you enjoyed this video throw me a thumbs up subscribe and stick around if you want to see more content on this car my z my bmw and more stuff to come thank you for watching Peace out and I'm out.